Right, in the UK, most modern houses, the non-load bearing walls, are made out of a wooden framework like this, which is called stud work. Sometimes though, they might use a metal frame instead of the timber one, but this is the one that's most widely used, this sort of timber structure called stud work. Plasterboard is then screwed onto both sides of the stud work frame to give a nice flat wall finish. Finally, the paint is either applied directly over the plasterboard, like what I've done here, or the plasterboard is given a thin coat of plaster and then the paint is applied directly onto the plaster afterwards. As you can see, these stud work walls like this do provide a nice, flat, even surface. However, they don't cope well with any heavy impact to the surface and you can end up with a hole straight through the wall like that, which isn't particularly good. But the good news is, it's not too difficult to repair these sort of defects in the surface like this. If you do some research on the internet, you see there's various different ways of dealing with these types of holes in these <coughs> plasterboard walls. But the way I tend to fix these is a way that I always showed how to do it when I did my apprenticeship. So the first thing you need to do, because it's had a bash inwards, there's probably bits of plasterboard stuck around the inside of the hole. So you need to just get your hand in there and pull out any loose debris that's stuck on the inside, like this. So just go around the inside of the hole just taking away these loose bits of debris, like this. There we go. That's it, so it's all nice and flat in behind there. No loose debris at all. And that's the next thing to do is to nip out to the garage or somewhere and get yourself a piece of thin wood like I've got here. It's a piece of plywood. And what I've made is, is that it's a roughly the same height as the hole, like that, you can see. And also, it's about two centimetres wider than the hole as well. And what I've done is I've put a screw into the middle of that piece of timber so I can hold on to it like that. Okay, so I've got my piece of wood ready with a screw in it. Now what you're going to need is some of this nail-free fixing. You can buy it in cartridges like this that you can put into skeleton guns and you can buy it in a tube like that. Various manufacturers do these sort of products and they all do much the same job. Okay, so what I'm going to do is unscrew the tube of that and put it on the ends of your piece of wood like that. Put plenty on there, it's got plenty to grip onto. Then what I'm going to do, if the camera can pick this up, is push it in the hole like that and put the screws that's in the middle of the hole and basically pull it towards you like this and then smooth the glue around the edge like that then we just got to leave that overnight for that glue to harden then we'll be able to get on with this next process tomorrow Okay, so now the old glue should be nice and hard now because I've left this overnight. So that should be nice, nice and solid. So the next thing I've got to do is to take the, the screw out here. And the best way to do it is by using a, a pair of pliers like this and not a screwdriver, okay? So what I tend to do is just pinch it on the screw and give it a few turns to loosen it. A bit more. And that's it, the old screw comes out, he's done his job. 
So the next thing to do is, is to actually fill in this hole. So I've already mixed up some filler here on this board to fill the hole with. Now the thing to bear in mind is you can get filling knives and scrapers. So this is a filling knife that's quite flexible on the surface. This looks very much the same, but it's a scraper so it doesn't bend at all. So if possible, use a filling knife if you can get hold of one. And the type of filler I'm going to be using is just a normal powder-based filler that you can get from your local DIY shop or online. So I've already mixed up my filler here to a good consistency like that. I've also made a video showing how to mix up the filler which you can have a look at if you've never mixed up polyfiller before. So because it's quite a deep hole on here, I won't be trying to fill it all in one go. So I'll probably need to have two or even three layers to do this, okay? So pull off a bit of filler like this and just mainly focus on going around the edge of the hole because the, the problem, you, the hole you have may be a lot bigger than this as well. So force the filler around the edge of the hole like that. This process, by the way, it's got a name, it's called backfilling, is what is known as in the trade. There we are, so you can see what I've done, I've been all around the edge of it and there's a bit in the centre of the filler as well. So we need to let that dry and um, if you've got quite a big hole you could be putting in quite a lot of filler and it could take several hours to dry but you might just want to get it done as soon as possible. So what you can do, an old trick as decorators use is you could use a hair dryer on a low setting and just tease it over the filler for a while just to help the drawing process of the filler. So I'm going to let that dry and as soon as it has I'll be back again for the next part of the process. Okay so the first sort of filler nice and dry now so I've mixed up some more filler to put on the next coat so cut off some filler And smooth it off. Okay, and I'll leave it like that now. And when it's dry, I'll rub it down. It may just need a little bit more filler just to finish it off, but we're hopefully we're nearly there now. Well, the good news is that filler's all nice and dry now ready to be rubbed down smooth hopefully and to do that I'll be using some of this 120 grade abrasive paper and to make sure it goes nice and flat on the surface I'm going to be using one of these rubbing blocks so I'll tie this abrasive onto this which will give a nice flat surface as I'm rubbing down but if you haven't got one of these you can't get hold of one what you can do is just use a piece of little piece of wood and just wrap the paper around it like that to rub down. So let's give a much smoother surface to blend in really. So I'm going to put my mask on and I'll go ahead whoops, and rub this down. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Look at that there. So the next thing to do, obviously I just dusted it off there with my dusting brush to get rid of any dust. So the next thing to do is to give this a thin coat of matte emulsion so that it adheres well to the filler. So what I've done, if you can see, I've put a little bit of matte emulsion in this paint kettle and I've thinned it down with water. 
And when we apply it, we call it a mist coat. So I'm just going to brush some of this thin matte emulsion over the filler. And what that does is that helps the paint soak in and really attach itself to the filler so it doesn't come off in the future. So we'll let that dry and then we'll give it the final coat of paint. Okay, so that's the mist coat dried over the surface there, so we're ready to put another coat of paint over the top. Now if you're trying to blend in with the existing colour and just patch in, it is possible to do that, particularly if it's a vinyl matte finish on the wall. If you've got a vinyl silk, the trouble is it will show up around the edge where you've painted it, so you need to paint the whole wall area really, but if it's done with vinyl matte, it's got no shine on it, it is possible to blend it in hopefully without having to paint the whole wall again, okay? Uh, normally, if you look at the texture on the wall, it's normally been painted with a roller, so it's a good idea if we're just going to paint over that patch to do it with a roller so it, so it blends in. And I normally use one of these mini rollers. Now when you buy these kits, they normally come with a foam roller, which is good for applying gloss paint, etc. And one of these more bushy ones for applying the emulsion paint. So that's the one I'm going to be using right now to go over this. Okay, so I've already put some matte emulsion in the little tray here. Just load them up with a bit of the paint. Like that. Work from the centre outwards. And just lay it off like that, smooth it out of the edges. That's that done. I'll let it dry, then I'm going to give it one more coat of paint, then we'll check it out what it looks like when I've finished. Well, that's all finished now. Um, holes gone, and hopefully, no one will ever know that the wall was ever damaged, as you can see. So, hopefully, you found this video useful. And if you have, why not subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos.